So I'm gonna go do some work on the storage shed. Nothing much has changed on the outside, as you can clearly see. I haven't made any progress. I did put the green treated sheets down on the bottom, but I'm making some serious modifications to the inside. Uh, I had a door here before and I've torn out the studs and the header and don't have a lot of support going on there for there because I'm gonna make some major changes. And then I had a window here and a window there. And if you can tell, I don't know if you can tell or not, but I tore out all the studs, added this, and I added that post. So tore out studs there, tore out studs and headers here, tore out a header over here. I got a whole new concept that I'm going with on with this. So I'm gonna have some windows all the way across the top there, several windows to let a lot of light in. Then I'm gonna put the door right here in the center. So this is requiring quite a bit of modification framing or framing modification. And it's a lot of work, but I, I honestly feel like it'll be worth it. So here I've got my grinder. I've got some grinding to do. This is a Milwaukee cordless grinder. And I tell you what, this thing is awesome. I have loved every minute of it. I don't use it a lot, but when I do, it's awesome. So putting on a, on a metal cutting cutoff wheel. Metal cutoff wheel is what this thing's called. It's for cutting metal. And I've got some, oh, that doesn't sound good. Huh? Guess I'll go with that. So over here, I've got these nails sticking out here. Quite a few nails that uh, went through the sheeting and then through the existing stud, and then came out the other side. So basically what I gotta do is just grind all of those nails off smooth so it's flat and ready to accept another stud uh, pushed up against it. I've already done the same thing on the other side, and it was quite a lot of work and pretty nasty. Lots of sparks in your face and all that good stuff. Oh man! I was gonna say, I felt something burning. I burned a hole right in my shirt right there. Turns out that I ended up burning a hole right in my shirt. This is a poly jacket, so some of the hot metal from those nails went right on there and burned me up, so. So I think I got her all fixed up, got myself a new shirt, and I've got all the nails ground down. So we're not gonna have any issues with that. I do have one more nail down there that I should probably grind right now. Now that I have those nails ground down, I can put my trimmer studs in there and I may, I'm gonna build a little bean pocket for that as well. So I need two there, two over there. I do have to cut these, all of these studs off so I can put a beam all the way up to the double top plate. It's turned out to be quite a big project to do so, but you can see all the damage that I had to do to the wall here, tearing out the Existing header, there were lots and lots of nails that I had to cut with the header and the sawzall. Lots and lots of work. It took lots and lots of time. design I need to cut an inch off this because this thing needs to be four and a half. This is engineered lumber. It is super uh, dense, heavy. 
All right, so this should go in here. <laughs> So here we are. Who's the sledge? Ooh, that's a good feeling. Feels good to pound that. Crappity crappity, that's gotta come out. So I've gotta take that out, because I'm cutting a beam pocket in like that. Forgot to cut the beam pocket out of there. That sucks because it's got nails right there. Needs to be nine and a half, nine and five eighths tall. Oh, it looks like I drilled through, or I cut right through one of my nails when I was cut through this piece. So that pretty much ruined the saw. So because my nails are only three and a quarter inches or something, the a full nail was not gonna go through all three um, studs. So I need to fasten it to the king stud, which is on the end. So I'm gonna use these screws. These are four inch screws, they're deck screws. It's got the uh, Torx head on the end, which is awesome. So I'm just gonna put a couple of Torx heads in there so I can fasten it and then a couple down into the bottom. Top plate as well. Oh, look at that! That broke the screw head right off. That's some thick and dense material. So, I guess we gotta pilot screw these or pilot hole these first, so. It's gonna do the same thing on the other side, over there, and then I should be able to just cut down the studs. Or, I don't know, that's a risky business, cutting those studs because there's nothing. There won't be anything holding it other than some plywood, so it's not so good. But I need to get that beam in there so I can trim it out and create my windows and blah, blah, blah. And then I've got to do the same thing on this wall and that wall. Put a beam up there because there's going to be windows on the side and on the front. So the next thing to do is going to be to trim these studs down so I can put the beam in. And then once the beam's in, then I can come back and uh, trim her out the whole window opening. There's quite a bit of work still left to do once I even get the beam in. Uh, but the beam needs to go all the way across. So I wish I would have thought of this beforehand, but my design guy came in after the fact. He's like, well, have you thought about doing this? And I was like, oh no, but I do want to do that. It's going to look sweet. So time to cut out those trimmer studs right there or those king studs. So I can put this beam in here. I've got the beam down here. It's ready to go. I've got this plank set up from this ladder. To that ladder, uh, 12 inch LVL, so it should be good. So the sucky thing about this whole deal is that once I cut these studs out, there's nothing holding up this roof except for this um, trimmer stud right here. We've got some on the end and then the sheets, that's it. Very little holding up this roof right now over my head. Got this one, that one, and one on the end. So I do have my beam ready. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in right now. Oh! Sure enough, that's pretty heavy. So I need to shim this up. This thing needs to be tight up against this double top plate. If you can see, there's a little bit of play in there. I did that by design because I wanted to be able to slip the beam in there very easily and simply. So, or simply. So I've got this pack of shims right here. These are cedar shims. I'm just going to put a couple of them right here. 
Okay, so I want that to be tight to the double top plate there. So I need to move my operations, move my uh, planking and scaffold set up this way. So I want to put a short beam from the end to here, and then I'm going to do a long beam from here to there so I can overlap. So the beams are gonna overlap by about four feet or so. I wanted to do this in one beam, uh, one piece and then another full beam having no cuts like this, but it just didn't work because that would've been really difficult to get that in there by myself and I just would, didn't wanna fight that. So I'm doing, putting them in one at a time. So I, uh, I'm not sure if I should do this tomorrow or continue working on this tonight. I don't know. Feel pretty good about having this beam in there. That is a really good feeling. Should probably nail that or toe nail that beam up into that double top plate. So I wish I could move on to the next, the next uh, step in this shed, maybe with the siding or the roofing, the windows, but I cannot do that till I get all the framing correct. Holy crap, man. Look at that sheet there. This is all material right here. It's a concave, I don't know if you can tell from there. That's all material I had to cut out and trying to get that um, header out of there. Had a window there and I had to cut everything out so it made a big fat mess, but it's okay because this is all gonna be covered up and Oh man, what a project, what a project. Fun project, very, very enjoyable, fun project. Glad I'm doing this and I'm glad I'm being able to take you guys along. That's it, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. We'll get those beams put in, get the windows framed out and the door and we'll kind of get this thing rocking and rolling.